Welcome back to Understanding Human Anatomy and the continuation of our discussion of retroperitoneal organs. Now at this time I'm going to sketch in the duodenum and the duodenum remember is secondarily retroperitoneal so it joins with the pylorus in the transpyloric plane then it curves around to the right and then extends over to the left put the other side of the duodenum in here and let me color that in and the duodenum remember is secondarily retroperitoneal and you can see that the duodenum is an anterior relation of the right kidney and it continues across the midline and almost makes it to the left kidney not quite to the left kidney so there we have the duodenum and let me put a label on it here and I put the label at the tail end of the duodenum and then we have associated with the duodenum the pancreas and the pancreas sits right in the curve of the duodenum here and extends across the midline and the tail of the pancreas is a relation to the left kidney. The head of the pancreas is a relation to the right kidney. And let me color in the pancreas now. I have it outlined. And again, the pancreas is a secondarily retroperitoneal organ. and we'll put a label on it there now the liver and gallbladder are also anterior relations of the right kidney and 
the stomach and spleen are also anterior relations of the left kidney. I'm not going to sketch those in because they're not retroperitoneal organs, but they do lie very close to the kidney. Remember that the spleen has the splenorenal ligament attaching it to the body wall right opposite the left kidney. Now, remember the pancreas has a head, a body area, and then the tail, which tapers down the tails in the region of the left kidney. The pancreas is both an endocrine and an exocrine gland. It produces digestive enzymes, and that's its exocrine product. The endocrine products come from the pancreatic islets, and they are the hormone insulin and the hormone glucagon. Insulin acts to lower blood sugar. Glucagon is an antagonistic hormone that acts to raise blood sugar. Now, finally, we have the ascending and descending colon both of which are retroperitoneal. So let me start over here on the ascending side. And the first part of the ascending colon is the cecum, which is kind of an expanded bag-like area. And coming off the cecum is the appendix. And then the colon ascends in a retroperitoneal position until it bends over in the right colic or hepatic flexure. and it becomes the transverse colon, or it empties into the transverse colon, which is peritoneal, so that's why I won't include it in the diagram here. Let me color in the ascending colon. And let me add Tania coli. Remember, there are three of these. And actually, all three tania coli come to meet at the appendix. The ascending colon, which we'll label with just an AC here. And we'll 
label the appendix Here. And then I'll sketch in the descending colon. beginning with the left colic flexure or renal flexure and the descending colon again is retroperitoneal secondarily and it opens into the sigmoid colon the sigmoid colon however has a mesentery so it is not a retroperitoneal structure so we won't draw it in and I'm just drawing in a little bit of transverse colon to make the diagram a little more complete we'll color in the descending colon Like so, and we'll put the Tania in on the descending colon side as well as it turns into sigmoid there. And we'll label the descending colon with just. A DC like so. So these are the retroperitoneal organs that we find in the abdominal cavity. Thank you for your attention.